Did you know that in 1959, for just a few moments, Vice President Richard Nixon was kidnapped? It happened on the first ever passenger monorail in the United States, and more importantly, it happened at Disneyland. It was a European vacation in 1958 in which Walt Disney first experienced a monorail. After seeing the vehicle produced by Allweg, a German company, Walt decided he wanted one of his own in Disneyland. Back in those days, Disney projects didn't undergo layers and layers of approvals and studies. If Walt had an idea he wanted worked on, that's all it took. So Imagineering legend Bob Gurr headed over to Germany to study the Allweg trains and start working on a unique version for Disney. It wasn't as simple as just buying their technology. Gurr found the Allweg trains weren't that good looking and needed a new aesthetic. On top of that, the plans for the Disneyland attraction would call for some tight turns and unusually steep inclines. Lastly, Disney wanted to make sure the monorails were built with parts that could be sourced locally. They didn't necessarily want to wait for parts to be flown over from Germany whenever something broke down. As a result, while Allweg was still technically attributed with the final monorail that would come to be, their actual involvement was pretty light. Much of the design was done by Disney. Still, Allweg was involved enough that the attraction's official name on opening day would be the Disneyland Allweg Monorail System. It would become the first passenger monorail system to operate daily in the Western Hemisphere. At $1.3 million, the monorail system wasn't cheap. On top of that, it wasn't easy to build either. The weeks leading up to the opening of the attraction were plagued with technical problems and breakdowns. It was so bad that even up until the night before the debut of the attraction, Bob Gurr and German engineer Conrad Deller were designing and building replacement parts for the system. The following morning, on June 14, 1959, it was time for the Mark I Red Monorail to make its grand televised debut. Being the force behind the attraction, Gurr was given a last-minute uniform and assigned to be the captain for the monorail's maiden voyage. In preparation for the broadcast of the grand opening, he pulled the monorail into the station and left it on so that the cab could remain air-conditioned. It was at that moment that Walt Disney, Vice President at the time Richard Nixon, his family, and his Secret Service detail showed up. Nixon and his family were going to be involved in the ribbon-cutting ceremony. However, before it all began, Walt started to show Nixon and his family the interior of the monorail. With it already powered up and running, it wasn't long before Walt told Gurr to just give everyone a lap around the track. So he did, with the Secret Service left behind on the monorail platform. Nixon found it amusing that they were able to ditch the Secret Service, but Gurr was a little stressed. He had just inadvertently kidnapped the Vice President on a monorail that was giving him nothing but technical problems during the weeks building up to this. His main goal was to get the VP back to the station in one piece. Luckily, the trip around the track was uneventful and without any breakdowns. However, any relief was short-lived. According to Gurr, as they approached the station, one of Nixon's daughters asked if they could ride around one more time, to which Walt replied, Bobby, give him another ride. So the monorail pulled into the station and rolled right out again. The Secret Service agents ran alongside the monorail in a hope they'd be able to jump on board, but with closed doors, there wasn't any chance of that happening. So one more time, the monorail pulled out with the agents left behind just to watch. The second lap would be as uneventful as the first, and luckily nobody would get in any trouble for the unexpected joyride. In fact, the biggest hiccup of the whole debut would be some trouble cutting the ceremonial ribbon which was nothing a little ripping and a jump cut couldn't solve. Later, an engineer from Allweg would highlight the absurdity of the situation. He pointed out that it took Allweg seven years before they'd feel comfortable putting the public on their trains. Yet Disney, in just six months' time, built a monorail and put their nation's vice president on it for a few laps without the Secret Service. Gurr said it was then that he realized what they did at WED. Sure, they were engineers creating amusements and rides for a theme park, but they developed projects at a speed in such a way that was completely unique to Disney. To many, it seemed like magic. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you'd like to learn more about all of the cool stories behind the history of Disneyland, I highly suggest checking out the Disneyland story by Sam Genaway. You can find a link to it in the description below. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.